Today we are celebrating the triumph of liberty and remembering the victims of communism. In late 1940, 40s, in the village where I was a school, at school at that time, one day the director of the school came and he told me that I am an enemy of class. I was a little bit surprised because I said that I got along very well with my classmates. He said, no, you were born an enemy of class because he explained to me that communism is a struggle of classes and I was born into a family that is an enemy of class. Therefore, I was an enemy of class. And that the enemies of class will be taken care of. Soon I learned what it meant. We were kicked out of our home. We could only take a few belongings. In time, my parents were imprisoned, my father for five years, my mother for 10 years, on forged accusations. We, the children with my aunt, were deported. I couldn't go to high school. In a way, we were lucky because we survived. Many millions did not survive communist dictatorship. All my life I had a dream, and that dream was that I will live the time when communism will be over, in Central and Eastern Europe at least, and Hungary and the other Central European countries will be free, democratic, and independent again. Uh, however, the struggle for uh, freedom was not an easy task, and many people in many countries played a very significant role. In June 1953, there was the uprising in East Berlin, crushed by the communist forces. In May 1995, the Soviet troops withdrew from Austria according to the treaty signed by the four allied occupying forces. In October of that same year, there was a 100th football match between Austria and uh, Hungary. The Austrians, freed by that time, uh, came by the thousands by car to go to the match. The Hungarians, we the Hungarians people, lined up by the thousands the, the, um, the road and saw the victory side and hoped that this will happen to Hungary soon again. However, on, the, on October 23rd of 1956, the revolution against the Soviet rule started in Budapest and quickly spread all over the country. The revolution and freedom fight was crushed by the Soviet tanks. Many people died and 200,000 Hungarians, mostly young people, fled the country, most of them to Austria for freedom. I was one of them. Let me seize this opportunity to thank, in front of the Austrian ambassador, the Austrian people for the enthusiastic and generous help, as in less than two months, 200,000 Hungarian refugees swamped Austria. It was not an easy task to lodge, feed, and provide clothing for such a huge mass of refugees in such a short period of time. But the government and the people of Austria displayed a marvelous dedication that none of us will ever forget. Next came Prague in 1968, which was also put down by banks, by tanks. In 1980, the Solidarity Movement in Poland started, which was repressed but not eradicated. Then on June 16, 1989, at the reburial of, of, uh, the ceremony of Imre Noj, Prime Minister Imre Noj, during the Hungarian Revolution, who was executed in 1957, a young man named Viktor Orban, in front of more than 100,000 people at the Hero Square in Budapest, under the shadow of the Soviet army, publicly demanded the withdrawal of the Soviet troops, first time in history. I was living in Washington then, but flew to Budapest with my son at the to the ceremony. When I heard that speech, I turned to my son and I said, it's cracking, and I was thinking of the whole empire. Uh, the event started to be 
speeded up. In August 19, the famous pan-European -Euro pan picnic took place and the Hungarian-Austrian border for the first time was opened. Hundreds of East Germans took advantage of the opening and fled for freedom in September. Tens of thousands of East Germans who came to Hungary in the hope of freeing to freedom were allowed to go to the West. In early November, the Berlin Wall fell and soon the Velvet Revolution in Prague toppled the communist regime in Czechoslovakia. Meanwhile, in August of that same year, 89, the human change took place in the Baltic countries, which then gained independence in 1991. Today, as we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of freedom in Central and Eastern Europe, our thoughts go to Ukraine and the courageous people in Maidan. We wish them success in their struggle for freedom and independence. We are with you. Today, we are also launching a major effort to build in Washington a museum remembering the victims of communism. Why to have such a museum? Not long ago, a couple from abroad and a 10-year-old child came to visit me. I showed them around, and we walked down on the mall from the Lincoln Memorial. I showed them the victims of Vietnam Memorial, the victims of uh, the Korean War Memorial, the Second World War Memorial, the Holocaust Museum we visited. And when it was all over, then the 10-year-old boy asked, but why all these killings? Why all these memorials to killings? And we explained to, them, to him that the 20th century was one of the bloodiest, if not the bloodiest, uh, <clears throat> um, century of history. And we need those memorials because the message of those memorials is never again. And yes, we have to build those memorials that yes, there will be 10 years of ch children who would ask their parents, why all these killings? Uh, why all these memorials? So yes, that the parents can tell them, the children, this, we have these memorials for the victims of, uh, of tyranny, tyranny that it will never happen again. And there is one memorial that is still missing from the scene of Washington, and that's a memorial, a museum for the victims of communism. And I hope with the dedication of all of us, it will happen. Thank you very much for your attention.